Stop genocide in a dark war. Blood of your blood, flesh of your flesh. Stop genocide in a dark war. Well, I was um, I was born in Spanish Town, and I was raised in St. Mary and Montego Bay. So most of my, my young to teenage years was, to my um, early 20s, was between St. Mary and Montego Bay. St. Mary, my grandmother, and Montego Bay, my mother. Um, in, I went to, to live with her when I was about maybe 12 years of age. So I went from a Christian home into a Rastafarian home. How was that transition? How <laughs> can I tell you? <laughs> it was a trip, you know, because that's me being introduced now to religion yeah. um, from, a, from a different point of view from what I'm used to. I'm used to Jesus, I'm used to that, and then I'm going to learn now Rastafari, you know? I, um, I want to tell you that I found out that both was actually very similar. It's just a difference in names and maybe lifestyle. And to tell you the truth, Rasta won for me because of the closeness of the concept to earth itself and the defending, the defending of the earth and, and what most of the, the stuff that the Bible talks about, what a real Christian should be. The Rasta man really was was leading a lot in that aspect however religion is really not the reason why i cited rastafari you know it was growing out in a surrounding where it was a, a debt to black and white don't so it wasn't it wasn't any partiality of saying racism from only one point of view it was getting rid of wrongs yeah. wherever it was and first of all in yourself so growing up and learning that balance in analyzing problems and how we deal with them it was very easy to bring it over to music when music became a part of me because it's not like even though my father is Derek Morgan and all of that lineage and everything it was like I was in the pursuit of music or wanted to be the next big thing I'll know we still know <laughs> you know, tap into that as yet. And I guess maybe that's why I use it so responsibly. You know what I mean? It's like I feel honored to be one of the 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 the, 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 the chanters and, and one of the, the the prophetess that come to, to you know, lend a voice to, to what being positive is all about. So I can say I, I have no regrets about my growing up because it's really helping me out now in music and how to, to, to deal with, you know, family from every angle of what family is supposed to be because I knew a family where it was, you have to pray every morning when you get up and you have to share it as I cement with, you, with the four of us. And that's, that's what I know. So when I share that with somebody that does not know that, it makes me give thanks, you know, for, that I was privileged to, to come up to that, that that level of love that I can actually bring out in my music. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So as a female artist in the reggae industry, in mm. Jamaica, talk about that. I always love that question and I love to talk about female in the business because honestly, I don't really I wouldn't say I have struggled yeah. because I choose what I was doing. I always love to say to female though that. Don't try to do what the man doing to to be recognized or you know what I mean to to make it now because you have to do it to the man them be because man are gonna always be man and the problem that why a lot of our female get so caught up and, and, and so worried about the man and what the man doing and the man take over the business is because they don't want to be women in the business. You know, you can't you can't come it's a saying that we women have to accept. A woman cannot do what a man do and still be a lady. So it doesn't matter how you come out and you're ready for broke down and say the rumors, you're going to be aging, you know, and 
you, 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 women age faster than men. <laughs> so, when the man at 60 can be on stage talking about him private parts and touching himself and people reacting, you as a female, you got really look. <laughs> to come away to see you at 60 something on stage and grab up your private, you know what I mean? So, I always love to say, don't, don't come in the business and our oh, man come into it, you know? Be a woman, first of all. So it, it doesn't... Beyonce and all these other girls overseas do it. They can be sexy, but it's when they're performing, when, when they're in the streets and when they're going to do the private stuff, they're, they're being themselves. They don't have to be hiding from who they are, you know what I mean? And, and I think that is one of the problems that our female artists in Jamaica have. They, they, they feel like they have to be doing that thing in order to be recognized and take off your clothes and wind down and you know it, it don't work you just laugh after you you know yeah. all right then so how you link up with tony rebel i met tony rebel at a show in montego bay just went there it was gone it's silk after he died his family kept the show for him and um my friends just said they're going and i should come and i love garnet is the reason why i really took music seriously and we just there, um, my friends decided that they was going to put my name up to sing and I was like, come on, you know? And anyway, they went and did it. I went on stage, I ended up singing about five of Garnet Silk songs. A guy that was in the in, in Rebel group at the time came to me and said he wanted me to meet Rebel. And like, while he was taking me to meet Rebel, he was like, Rebel, where are you there? And Rebel's like, what are going on? And he's like, I'm, I'm bringing somebody to meet you. And, and Rebel is like, the only person he wanted to meet is the girl that was on stage. And he was like, is she a I love to tell the story why the closest that Garnet Silk and Tony Rebel had, he's the one that introduced Garnet Silk to the world, you know. And for him to recognize Garnet Silk in, in a, my voice is like that. It's very special to me. So it's like, to me, it was a divine meeting. And he invited me to Flames. That was in 98. And this is where I've been, and I grow so much just by him being the selfless person where he is and teaching you all the aspects of the business because a lot of our entertainers, they don't really do that to the younger artists that are coming up, you know, and I would really encourage them to, to, to really, like, do that, you know. Um, encourage the young artists that come into your camp. Carry them on the road with you, you know, show them the big crowd, introduce them, and... This is what it, it, it turns out to, you know, and, and I cannot be ungrateful to Flames Productions, you know, because they helped to make me into the artist I am today, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Burn some herbs. I, I just wanted to write an herb song that was not typically, you know, an yeah, herb I song. I mean, a lot of people that burn herbs are just friends, you know, you know how is that like on campus or any group situation is just friends burning herbs <laughs> together. It's always in a situation. So I, I was like, I could write a song. I love to tell stories. From when I was a child, I would just make a story up and it would make my sister and my brother cry and I can make them laugh. I make them do whatever I want in the same story. So I guess I use that in my music too. It's like I want to, 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 to tell a story of, of two friends becoming lovers on account of just always chilling together, burning herbs. And it's like, you don't realize that I'm in love with you. Like, that's, that's a cute, that's a cute thing, you know, it's like, you, and you think about the countryside, you think about the moonlight, you think about the ambience that you would imagine yourself, yeah, yeah. you know, in, because I am a very romantic person. I love tranquil, I love beautiful settings, you know, where you can just meditate and just free your mind, no matter where you're there, you know, that's me, so I love, I love that feeling, that's, that's, that's what I did with Beautiful Day, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just me always driving to the country to look for my kids and my, and my parents, and, and it's just my driver, it's not no lover, it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not me and my baby driving up, but I, I say, it's just a beautiful thing, you know, you see the day, you see, that kind of vibe you see you on a lover driving out and everything done for the weekend you just yeah the weekend. you know what i mean i mean people if you if you a lot of people thought that song was a love song it's, and it's not a it's not a love song it's a song about the country you know it's it's, it's just the way i sing it you know what i mean yeah because um sometimes i wonder why you don't sing more 
it, um, you know, I never knew I could DJ, you know. Yeah. It's like it's not like I knew I could DJ. I, I started DJing on, on tour in Europe when um, Tony Rebel did a song with Suede called Just Friends. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and me and Lady G did the female version. That's around what, like uh, 2000? Yeah, 2000. And when we went on the road, I had to do Lady G part. And that's how I realized that I could DJ. And, and, I, and I remember that that was the first time that I got like a real big serious fall. was like, but it was more like people were shocked. I was, what was that? You know, so it's like it was so loud. It was like you couldn't believe it was a small free me to come out. You know, so everybody say added to the singing. In regards to Europe, how big is the response in Europe for you? Well, if you can be on stage and have forty thousand people with all of their hands up in the air, yeah. then you know they love you over there. Yeah, yeah. And um. I can say that I work my way to that right now in Europe by just going around there and being myself and doing my thing and people just love me each time I come back I bring something new yeah. to the point now where I'm headlining my own tour and stuff from there, you know? So that's personal achievement and that's good. Yeah, because European is a different market. You see like Europe, California, more embrace culture. Yeah, you know. But tri-state. A different day. It's a, it's all about what they, what what's on the market. It's yeah. all about who benefits from that particular kind of marketing yeah, at the yeah, end of the yeah. day, you know. So that's why we we don't really double a lot, you know. We we love to stay true to what we believe in and and yeah. and just know that it's for a good reason and a good cause, and we make the Almighty work out the rest. We don't really want to be yeah, everywhere, yeah, true, you know. True. All right, so let's go with um. Stay the Jamaica in regards to what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. What you think about those things? Very deplorable. I mean, I consider myself an enemy of the state. Because I am totally anti-society, you know, because I think, I think that especially our corporate society in Jamaica is very unfair to the poorer class. You know what I mean? It's like the merge with the government and they have the government at a, at, a, at a gunpoint for them to do whatever it is that they want. And they don't matter who suffer on the, down, on the grassroots. And they find ways to get their ads out and to get their commercials going when they want to win the next election. And you know what I mean? But when it comes to the unification of the ghetto youths and how is it that so much guns in there? Why is it that the police and the garrison can't have a good relationship? You know, and, and yet still the Queen of England send our youth them come out here and uh, Rasta they have play Kete, you know, it's like the thing I go back way. Yeah. You know, and there's no one for defend the people to say, Look here, what you're doing is wrong and, and you need to draw breaks and, and really start be who you're supposed to be, which is humanitarians. You get you don't get that job for mistake. Just like I am a musician and an artist, you being a politician supposed to be the one that's supposed to look out for the people account to what the reality of it's supposed to be but you end up working for the system against the people that you love to come and beg a vote from yeah. you know and you tell them that you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're begging them please to understand and you know it's, it's, it's sad but sometimes too I'm angry with the people because at the end of the day is you is you can't say you're not gonna work tomorrow you can't say enough you know what I mean but then again, you are what you eat, and they've been feeding the people a long time. <laughs> they've been feeding the people a long time, so it makes you wonder too, you know, like, when you stand aside and, and you look at the way they behave, and you see that you really don't eat what they're eating, and you've seen the truth and them not seen it, it makes you wonder, like, you know, could it be that something is wrong in, in the very food that they're feeding the people? You know, why is the garrison filled with so much Alcohol. Why so much alcohol in the ghetto? Why so much alcohol in the ghetto? And you can't find money for, 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 um, for build a, a football field or, or a community centre, but you can paint all of the bar them red. Leave red! You know, and, and that's, what you, that's what you think they need. You know, by the way, the, the, the level, I am, I am so uncomfortable with the level of, of alcohol 
that, that, that the youth them consuming. Yeah. By, by our, our young men, by the time they reach 35, 37, all of them cirrhosis and liver and them something them, to, to the level of how them drinking. You know, and, and why is it so accessible? Why oh, you just easily can't get anything now for drink? And and the youths them singing about it. What is BD? How come BD so common? And it is even more addictive than cigarette. How it come into the country? You know, why bleach is so normal? You know, why are all these things that are self-destructive so normal and there's nobody to come forward and say, wow. This is not just somebody eating kalalo and talking rasta now, you know. This is something serious. Why you don't have enough people to defend the kind of music that me and many others like myself do? That is talking about upliftment, but yet still, you, you promote everything that is dealing with gun violence, everything that is dealing with, 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 with teaching the youth how to kill them one another, how to bring gun to school. These are the people that you're bigging up. These are the people that promote your products. These are the people that you have on billboards. All of the, and you're saying to me that something isn't wrong? Something wrong, man. Somebody out there don't want these youths to elevate themselves. And it's not only Jamaica. True. It's Universal. anywhere. Yeah. There's a mass of black people. And this is not to be racist. This is just talking reality. Mm -hmm. If you look at reality and take out race out of it now, you see, say, it's really seriously something that is aimed at young adolescent black youths when you go into the women's centers in jamaica you have 400 girls in there right every single one of them pregnant under 17 and they are pregnant by either their fathers or bigger men than them or our school their same schoolmates all of them under 17 and you have a government that is only saying that they're going to build up centers for battered women and they're going to build a new prison and they're going to build a new and, and you don't hear nobody saying let us build some factories let us build some some institutions to teach these youths computers and all these things so and you, and you, and you wonder why is the, is the society so deteriorated it is planned you see spoke earlier of musicians who deal with the foolishness as i would say right how do you feel like, um, I know some artists don't work at certain stage shows if certain people work there. So how yeah. do you deal with that? That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's, those people are the ones that are mashing up the industry. They are the fakers in yeah. the industry. If you're, and they're like Christians who don't want to go out and win souls for the Lord. Because the Lord said, you're not come, you don't come for the righteous, but you come for the unrighteous. Yeah. So wherever the unrighteous is, if that's you're saying right. you want to win souls, that's where you need to be. That's, who, that's where you need to reach out to. I am afraid a lot of these holy um, artists, a lot of our holy artists turn out not to be so holy. I, that's why I try to be myself. I never come to preach. If you listen to most of my songs, I hardly even sing about Eileen Selassie. Because I don't need to sing about Eileen Selassie in, that, in, 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 to, to, to try to prove anything to anyone. You know what I mean? There are many things that we can be singing about. But you have a lot of people that they come fake and they come and say, yeah, they love the people and the poor and they are just like the politicians. There are a lot of artists right now who are worse than politicians because they come and they know what the people of the ghetto are suffering and they sing about it and they get wealth from it and they turn around and buy guns, give back to the same youths. And, you understand what I mean? So, they're not doing anything different from what the, the, the dons and the, 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 the politicians are doing. They're all on the same side, working for society. All right, so um, let's talk about the, uh, the new album. Who is it? Flames doing the new album? No, we're looking at um, VP Records. VP? Yeah. When is it going to be released? It's supposed to be released in the summer, early July. So Daddy's going to be on there? Yeah. And Rob? Mm, not sure. Not sure. I w what we're trying to do is um, the first album was singles that we put together that was out that we think people did not really get to hear these songs. So we decided to put that out. So what I want to do with this album is to have most exclusive tracks on it just, just coming straight out of Africa, you know. 
you never hear them before kind of thing. So if you don't hear songs like those, you know, be thinking of maybe doing daddy in a in a in a different language to spread it out a little further, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just just bringing a next level of a little more of the singing that you say you don't hear. Yeah, yeah that's along that line. Alright, you have a message for the people? Yeah, man, I always have a message for the people, you know, and, and the message for the people is, especially poor people, no matter where you are on the face of the earth, you are the ones that keep the rich alive. The poor is what keep the rich alive. In Sierra Leone, the, the, the poor that go down and gravel and work their fingers to the numb are the poor. They are the ones. You cannot go down there. You can say no to whatever it is that you're suffering from. You... Being poor is making global warming possible by always graveling at the things that world leaders make and try to introduce to lure you in. We as the poor people in the world can stop all the negatives by just saying no. Because it's just for us to remember for a second that self-worth is more important than anything else that anybody can offer you in the form of a promise. And promises is what they all use to keep us at the level that we are. It doesn't matter what our language, our color, our creed, it doesn't matter. And it's just for us to just, just start believing in our individual self. You sitting down there watching that or watching this program. You, the individual, have to make that first step and stop looking out of yourself for leaders and start to lead yourself first. Then you can understand a leader when a leader is either fake or a leader is true to you because then you'll be true to yourself so you'll know for a fact and until we start to do things like these we're always going to be at the bottom wondering why is it that we can't get better why is it that we have to be voting you see how hard america begging right now to get some votes they are so intelligent they're they're so sophisticated but they are begging you the poor to give them a chance to give you better housing, better education, better gas price, but you, and you need all these things. But at the end of the day, you're just going to give them that hope and that promise, make their dream come true while you still wait around for the next promise. It's for you to know that when you put that vote in whatever it is that you vote for, when you mark that mark, you make sure so you mark it for yourself. So when they don't give you what you want, you start to ask questions. That's why you have computers and all these techn technologically advanced things. Use them at your disposal for your own rights. We quarrel and we fight, but we're going to make it up tonight. I love the way you play.